It's another book prize video. You're joking. Not another one? Oh, for God's sake, I can't honestly, I can't stand this. Hello, I'm Eric from Lonesome Reader. And in case you aren't from the UK or you haven't seen that uh, video clip before, that, that was from a news clip uh, last year that sort of went viral of this woman reacting to Theresa May calling for a snap general election and I could just watch it a zillion times. So yes, I'm making a video today about this year's Rathbone's Folio Prize shortlist and why I think this prize is so interesting is because I think the core values of it touch on something which has been discussed recently on booktube a lot um, in regards to literary versus commercial fiction. Uh, Simon and Britta have both made videos talking about this and what I think this discussion boils down to is a question of readability. Well, the Rathbones Folio Prize was started in 2013 in response to how judges of the Booker Prize were stressing the importance of readability at that time. And I think the creators of the Rathbones Prize were worried that books were being listed uh, just for being commercial or very popular. These are really loaded terms and I'm not going to begin unpacking them, but the creators of the Rathbones Folio Prize decided to start this award to judge books based solely on merit and which are chosen by members of the Folio Academy. Uniquely, the prize includes fiction and non-fiction. It's open to books written in English and published in the UK. The winner will be announced on May 8th and will receive £20,000. And I'm quite excited. The judges for this year's prize are uh, Jim Crace, Nikesh Shukla, and Kate Summerscale, who are authors whose writing I really like. So the Not So Short shortlist has eight books on it uh, that includes five novels and three books of nonfiction. And what I think so interesting about this list, uh, like I said in my last book prize video, um, they're a mixture of books, some of which have been nominated for book prizes before, and others uh, which, to the best of my knowledge, haven't been nominated for anything. So I think it's really interesting to have that mixture. Personally, I don't read all that much nonfiction, so it won't surprise you to learn that uh, I've read all five novels, but I haven't read any of the three nonfiction books. Uh, so I'll go through and I'll give brief summaries of all the books uh, just to give you a taste of them. But I'll talk about the novels first because those are the ones that I've read. Anything is Possible by Elizabeth Strout. I love Strout's writing so much. Uh, this is her sequel to her novel My Name is Lucy Barton. And though I think this book is fantastic, I have to say it's more like a book of interlinked short stories than a novel. But I don't think it really matters how you classify a book because the way Strout writes about this uh, different group of characters in this small town is so mesmerizing that it's just great. And uh, I don't think you need to have read My Name is Lucy Barton before reading this to really enjoy it. But if you have read Lucy Barton, then uh, it gives a really different perspective on her character, um, seeing her through the different eyes of all these different characters in this small town that she grew up in. Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. Uh, this is also shortlisted for the Dylan Thomas Prize, which I previously made a video about. Um, it was also longlisted for this year's uh, Desmond Elliott Prize. And Sally Rooney won the Sunday Times Young Writer of the Year Award last year. Uh, so with all that award attention, it makes you think there must really be something about this novel. And I'm glad that awards made me pay attention to it because, like I said before, um, this book was a real slow burner for me and it took me a while to get into the story and really appreciate it. But I finally did and I think it's great. Uh, it's the story of a small group of friends, their tangled love affair and the emotional despondency of modern life. Another novel which was a slow burner for me was John McGregor's Reservoir 13. This was longlisted for the Booker Prize last year and shortlisted for the Goldsmiths Prize. And this is one of those really like high literary novels because while it's, it's very readable, uh, but it doesn't have a conventional plot, uh, rather you get sort of snippets of characters' lives over many years. Uh, you just get these small looks into their lives, but don't get the full story, uh, which can be quite disorientating and distancing. Uh, so I, I found it um, a bit of a struggle to get through, but then once I finished it, 
I, thinking back on it, I found it so moving thinking about the themes of it and how he looks at time and community. And I'm not just saying that as like, I understand this great literary novel um, in this like snobbish way. Like I, I honestly did find it really moving in a similar way to Virginia Woolf's The Waves, uh, which I think is similarly quite distancing and disorientating at first. Uh, but once you really understand the rhythm of it and the characters, like it becomes so moving. And The Waves is one of my favorite novels of all time. It actually it is my favorite novel of all time. So that's really high praise. So this is a novel that I really want to reread and I think I'll get a lot more out of the second go around. Next is a really controversial novel, Exit West by Mohsen Hamid. This was shortlisted for the Booker Prize last year. As some people love this novel and others really criticized it for uh, the quality of its writing and the way it portrays its characters. It's a really unique love story set against a refugee crisis where foreign countries literally become each other's neighbors when these doors start to appear. I felt the concept for this story was really interesting and it does have some very touching moments. It's not my favorite novel, uh, but one that I honestly appreciated. Next is a novel which hasn't received any awards attention that I'm aware of, uh, but it should have done. Uh, it's White Tears by Harry Kunzru. It's the story of two young musicians who start a successful business, but they soon become distracted by this very emotionally arresting blues song. And one of them, the narrator, becomes obsessed with sort of tracking down the origins of the song. And it becomes a kind of detective story that soon slides into the surreal. Uh, it's a really unique take on sort of history and identity and race. Uh, so I'm really glad to see this book receiving some attention. So those are the five novels. And if you want to know more of my thoughts about any of these books, I'll put links to my full reviews in the description below. Uh, and then there are three books of nonfiction. And I really like that this award is challenging me to read more nonfiction. Uh, so first is Once Upon a Time in the East by Zilo Gao. Uh, and I haven't read this book, but I have read her novel I Am China, uh, which I really enjoyed. It's a very strong novel. This is a memoir which won the National Critics Book Circle Award. It was also shortlisted for the Jalak Prize and shortlisted for the Costa uh, Book Awards in the biography category. It's the story of the author's turbulent childhood uh, as she was raised by a number of different people and only met her parents when she turned seven uh, and then about her uh, sort of coming of age and eventually moving to the UK. Next is the memoir, The Day That Went Missing by Richard Beard. And when Richard was a boy, he went swimming with his brother Nicholas one day during a family holiday and Nicholas accidentally drowned. And after the family buried his younger brother, they sort of erased that day and erased Nicholas from their lives and memories. So this memoir is Richard's process of trying to find out what really happened that day and why it was forgotten. And finally, Ghosts of the Tsunami by Richard Lloyd Perry. So in March 2011, a earthquake caused a massive tsunami to crash on the uh, northeast coast of Japan and caused 18,000 people to die. So Richard Lloyd Perry was a foreign correspondent covering this for a number of years. And so he recounts in this the stories of people who lost their lives and communities living with the ghosts of these people they lost. And uh, the story of how the nation tries to come together after such a massive tragedy. So those are the books. Have you read any of them and do you think they're prize worthy or are you interested in reading any of them now? Uh, is there any book in particular that you would root for to win? Uh, if I were a judge, I think I would have a really hard time uh, choosing between Reservoir 13 and Anything is Possible. Um, but, uh, well, th then there's White Tears as well, which I think is really unique. And so, like, uh, I don't know, I, it's a good thing I'm not a judge. And obviously, I still need to read the nonfiction. Also, let me know your thoughts about whether you think literary merit should be considered more important than readability in a book. I'd be really interested to know your thoughts. Uh, so thanks for watching and happy reading, everyone.